titled our 20 by 20 by 5, the mundane, the pragmatic, and the fantastic. Because uh, we feel that those three uh, things describe uh, the sort of the chronology of our project. Oh. Uh, uh, this is the beginning of the mundane section of our <laughs> presentation. It's a spreadsheet. Uh, and we have uh, loads of spreadsheets. This one's up by. What is it about? This is the plan of work. Plan of work. We started the project. On the 12th of May, we made this, and we got the first date right and the end date right, anyway. Uh, this is our budget, which we <laughs> made when we started. I think we imagined that the project would come to £6,740, which we're going to magically garner from some sort of institutes or whatever. We didn't get any of it, uh, but uh, <laughs> we managed to do it anyway. Uh, yeah, here we are. Um, also at the beginning, part of our project was picking around the, uh, most of the schools in the UK and Ireland. And so this is us labelling the different ratio hits and how we could manage to visit as many of them as we could. We've got a 22 of them. This is the ones we did manage to get to. These are the ones, yeah. Apart from these three, the lot. Yeah, there's no colour. Yeah. Oh. Well. These are the students. Yeah, this is everyone, yeah. this is the response we got from emailing schools and visiting schools and asking people to like partake in our project. Like fill out a boring form yeah. really and like have to write text and like upload a, a file of a certain resolution. Yeah. It's so, so annoying but these the right what we'll we'll go. Go. Yeah. Uh, this is still the mundane? Uh, is this the e I think this is still the mundane. Alright. Uh, we'll soon find out. selection process, uh, after we visited all the schools, then we got together a, a group of people who were involved in architecture, education, blah, blah, blah. Um, and we met up at Rebo, very kind of gave us a room to host this selection process. They selected the work that's on the walls here, and the students who are here. This is the transcript of that selection process. <laughs> There's 18 and a half thousand words there, and uh, the team of us used Google Docs to make. Yeah, we weren't really able to. But it's yeah, epic. Two and yeah. hours and forty minutes. Yeah, so like two and a half, half hours of yeah. talking there. Yeah. Yeah. And that is what uh, it actually costs to, to do all that everything that we had to do so far. So far. But um, we're driving to Sheffield on Sunday, and the gas isn't involved in that, so it'll start to pump up a wee bit. Yeah, we might hit the three figure mark. Soon. We did. We did that the first week. Yeah. This is the bus route that our um, our good project illustrator drew, um, going around the different universities. Uh, she made it like some sort of yeah. So this is the fantastic by the way. This is oh, like, yeah. this is what actually one of the best things about it was yeah. getting to go to all the schools, mm -hmm. uh, getting to meet all the students and see all these different cities that otherwise we probably wouldn't have gone to. Um, one of the other best things is all the friends that we've made along the way. Uh, uh, the, the different groups that are involved. There's obvious overlap and linking between some of the most topical uh, and current uh, pop-up groups or just current groups or new groups and so we love that, we think that's one of the best things about this whole thing yeah. by the time. Uh, people as well, you know, we've worked with a great uh, range of people 
Uh, not one of them have been able to get drawn by an illustrator, so we have to do some. <laughs> <laughs> so it's our role in the studio. Yeah, I'm not going to name them, but yeah. our project illustrator drew those. Uh, Forum, another fantastic uh, range of people. Yeah. The, that's the, the 21 people that we selected from all those people that submitted, people that are on his work is on display and who have been working with us on sort of, you know, getting everything up and going and, you know, doing, being really active and, yeah. One of the best things about the project has been the events that we've held this week. It just makes it all real, all real, you know, uh, you work, you saw the emails, you saw the transcriptions, it's all very abstract, but having people come along, you guys come along tonight, is, and having the discussion, like, just what we've been having, is so enriching, so. Mm. This is the book. Uh, doesn't exist yet, but it's yeah. on the way. Uh, as you can see by the various drafts that we've got in our superseded folder, uh, we're going to have that ready. Sort of hopefully by the time we're done moving around the country, you know, yeah. that will sort of bring everything together. Yeah. Yeah. And so next up, we're, uh, we're moving the exhibition to Sheffield. Like I said, this is not the van, but it. It looks like the van. <laughs> it looks like the van that we're getting. Uh, and these are planks that we used to make this bad boy. Um, and the uh, uh, part of it. Uh, workshop, which kindly let us use their place um, along this, this whole barber system that we'll be using. I think this is the last slide. That's it, so. yeah. So that was the uh, was mundane, pragmatic, and fantastic. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. It's yeah. been all of those things, I think. Yeah, it's yeah. been all of those. And manic, but we didn't have any slides. Yeah. <laughs> stepping on your toes as well uh, as app guys, but we're trying to raise questions or at least reflect what's on our minds or what's on the collective conscience, at least in architecture, architecture education, people in transition like in, in, in this place. So I it's kind of a punctuation. We want to make a mark. Yeah. So is it a commentary or proposing a solution? Uh, we're going to have some propositions that are geared towards being provocative. One of, and funny that we just had this conversation, but one of our propositions is to dissolve architecture schools or uh, like uh, not allow students to uh, present with final drawings. You're not allowed, or they are allowed to present with final drawings, but uh, it's mandatory that you burn them uh, just before they start. <laughs> so they've got like, I'm starting to ask the question of where is the architecture, it's right in, it weaves right in with a lot of the questions being raised. Like, as well as, it's uh, in the times where there are a lot of like, difficult questions being asked, uh, we're kind of also looking for the positive in all of it as well. We're trying to find out what's really good that's happening in schools, like, you know, students everywhere are producing great work, like, and, you know, we're trying to sort of find out what, you know, what's being done with it and, you know, how is it, has it being used and you know sort of celebrate it a bit and yeah. One of the one of the things that relates to the what now uh, collaborative is that well you're right actually we are in a very particular time in architecture all right and that's partly because of the schools that we're in and the way that they're run which is really nice that we start talking about this and went before and so you have to think well how else were architects um, contributing positively to society before and now. One of the ways that they were taught by being like apprenticeships, though it's called the pupilage system, where you just you'd go in uh, to an office and you'd work and you'd then not take on more architects than they needed. So there'd not be a saturated uh, uh, industry. Um, they'd pay you on a sliding scale just like any other apprenticeship would do. You just earn it so there'd probably be um, no loans as you're being paid to do the work anyway. You'd learn exactly what you needed to do, so that kind of touches your point. Like, uh, why are we learning such massive ranges of things but not be able to construct the building? I'm not saying that I actually pushed this, or we pushed this idea forward. The people systems, something that's been and finished, but there are interesting questions to, with this proposition. Mm. Mm. 
I thought it was a competition between like digital and hand drawn. Do you have a winner? Or is that not a competition? <laughs> 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 we're not uh, there is a competitive element that we're not a competition. <laughs> oh, but about the digital digital and 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 <laughs> yeah. It's well it kind of I mean it the, it has it did sort of start as that. Well, it did it did start as that. Uh, and it sort of changed from that. Our strap line has changed more than once, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was our original kind of thing that we were looking at. Uh, but I think we realised then we were just more interested in looking at drawings um, and kind of what they mean uh, in relation to education. And you know, and that by looking specifically at drawing by hand, drawing by computer, uh, we were missing out on a whole bunch of other th interesting things that we could be looking at, like. How many students are there in a unit per tutor, per like saw or like tool or computer or whatever like you know facilities and things that are available to students? And in, when we were going around the schools looking at all the drawings, we were looking, we were finding out things about that kind of thing that we weren't. We didn't go there to look at for them. We were going there to look at the, at the drawings. But then we were talking to people and we started noticing all these other things that were really interesting as well. And in doing that. We kind of changed our focus from away from that to as the sort of more general looking at. Well, I think in the other we were talking about sort of how much it costs actually getting into architecture and doing it. Have you seen sort of, I guess you because you went around so many, did you know it's just from what you were choosing on when that went, whether it was anything to do with how much the universities had spent on the actual course? Because I know there's a lot of different, you talk about the size of workshops, like actually being able to do some of the stuff in one sort of would be impossible in another. And from the selection, like, was it evident that? The money is an issue with actual people producing this kind of work. I think there are a lot more dimensions than just the money or the or the kind of subdivision well, or solution or budget. Say. Right. So we, yes, part of the book that is coming out um, is a report and it looks at the factors that at least we observed affecting our uh, architecture education or like your education. One of the real obvious examples would be Bath has an adjoining engineering school and doesn't have an art school connected to it. It says a couple of things. One, they probably don't have a print studio. They don't have people who know how to print uh, with out a studio. They do know how to test concrete and bricks, you know, and stress those things. But they also have a lot more technical ideas. And that doesn't preach on everything, but that does start to maneuver that, that school of architecture in a certain direction. Different schools that do have art schools right beside them, in fact, even integrated with them. Let's look at the RCA. Uh, they've got multidisciplinary, interactive elements, loads of like new material forming wax, blah, blah, blah. And they've got crazy um, outlook. Here's, here's a 3D printer that a guy made. But as an example, that's, um, does, that begins to answer your question. There are other factors that we're going to totally highlight or, yeah, in the book. I think it's one of the things you bring up when you meet someone else from a different school. Mm -hmm. Or when you see with sort of Chetil, it's pretty dire in terms of production value, as it were, or actually mm -hmm. making something cast to concrete or that moves and stuff. But I guess, did you find that it sort of affected how sort of the schools were teaching them or how students were actually doing? Or, uh, I think it is. Like or, just, like or just as one example, so going back to the handle on the computer, there's no sort of mad parametric. Thing around, yeah. which is quite telling. Mm. Or it's just because you don't like it. <laughs> Both. Uh, <laughs> I, that we just didn't find, uh, you know, we engaging get, parametric drawings. Actually, we expected. We didn't get to given, yeah. yeah. We we put out an open call for submissions, mm. and uh, you know, the response largely shaped what's on the wall today. You know, like. Uh, you know, there, prob there might well be plenty of amazing, like, mental or parametric drawings or whatever, like, the, or there was a couple other from types of drawings. The that we got, yeah. the, they just weren't shortlisted by, by the selection panel. They kind of, like, you could have, yeah, you could have, uh, no, I'm not going to go down the Well, that is the, <laughs> well, that is the other thing. In doing, in doing this, like, going through this, like, collecting submissions and going through the selection process, we also then decided that we were starting to look at other awards things like the Reba 
medals and things, things that are, you know, set, choosing or deciding what is apparently the best work. Um, and, you know, we, I think we, it was kind of an experiment to see like, what processes do you have to go through to get to make a decision about what is better than one thing. And then in the context of all these schools with all these different agendas and different, you know, um, facilities and things, how can you then compare one drawing from one school or one student from another school 